Hey guys, I'm going to do a spirit talk. I feel this is an important one. I really want to get a strong message out here. I'm really feeling it because um just reading one of my emails, you know, from one of my viewers, and I appreciate you guys if you you know for subscribing. Please subscribe to my channel. Um, I do all kinds of stuff. Obviously, I do political reads, missing person, true crime. I, I do a whole lot of stuff. Um, sometimes throw in a little celebrity, mainly if it's impacting the collective, like maybe some yay stuff and you know, yee, yay, what <laughs> Kanye, you know what I'm talking about. Um, various things going on. I, I really like to examine the collective, you know, where certain things are leading a whole thing, you know, um, which I won't get into a whole bunch on that. Well, I will, but um, this is what I want to go at. Uh, let's go with this angle because each video has a, a purpose, you know, and I'm trying to get out there, get some messages and I appreciate you guys that are, you know, following me and checking out my vids and, and everything. And I really try to get you some good tarot reads especially get some good messages of spirit um you know and hey i got my <laughs> if you i don't read backwards but this is the you know see, you know see the fall season for the patriarchy fall right okay you know um but anyway i had a uh a somebody messaged me you know they really kind of want to talk and they're they're really concerned and really afraid which I feel speaks for a lot of people um, right now in this country. Basically, if you're not Anglo-Saxon, Protestant, whatever, okay, evangelical Christian, you know, a lot of people are scared, okay, that because they're an other than that, they're very afraid with things that are going on, okay? I get it. I get it. You know, be, you know, being kind of in this country and the madness and everything, you know, and, um, I, I, I want to, I'm going to do a cut of a collective read and a message, but I'm going to, I'm going to make some strong statements here because, you know, some things need to be said about it. And I know it's, it's hard, you know, being in this country, seeing the, the racism and the, the bigotry and the misogyny and, you know, the, the hatred, you know, I mean, so much is, is being projected LGBTQ and even Jewish people lately. And it's, it's so much, it's so much that people are really afraid because then there are people that are trying to get into government and get elected and are taking power positions. And a lot of people are really scared. I, I get you guys. I get you, but let me, let me tell you something. First, and, and I'm going to get that collective read. I have a lot to say on it because I don't want you fearful. Several things. Okay. Bear with me here. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to try to get in the spirit. Where's my selenite wand? Because I know it's a lot of heavy energy. Okay. And so if you ever get a selenite wand, if you're ever feeling heavy negativity and you can't quite sage, you know, all the smoke and burn it, get a selenite wand and clear your energy. Okay. Let me talk about me just a little bit, you know, um, just talk about me, what I'm doing right now. Um, you know, many years ago, you know, I'm, I'm on this alternate path, spiritual and, and everything like that. And, um, you know, now obviously, you know, I have a YouTube channel. Um, I have a Facebook group and if anybody wants to search my name, <laughs> which is not a real common name, you know, really it's not okay. Um, search my name, whatever. All this is going to pull up on me. And then I'm basically a psychic reader. I have, an, I have an alternate path. All that good stuff, right? So if the, you know, say the Christian nationalists took over. Okay. Well, you know, with, with them being all fearful of the witches. Okay. They're going to come after me and people like me too, right? Oh, sure, sure. But you know what? I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. And... I'm not going to stop giving my messages and that that's the thing. I, I'm just not going to do it. I'm too fucking old to care. I, I'm 53. I'm going to be 54 in January. I'm too fucking old to care. I'm not afraid of these people. Okay. And the other day, just, <laughs> just give it a thing. Um, I, when I went to get my eyeglasses, Okay, notice uh, if everybody's noticed that uh, I've had some comments. Um, I did um, get new eyeglasses, but um, let me let me dig it out of here. I've I've got a mess here because I I moved and I've got a lot of stuff, but I I think I can dig it out. Okay, so just imagine me going in. 
I have to get my eyes examined and I'm going to go in and buy a new pair of glasses. So I didn't have this shirt on. I've got a lot of shirts like this though. I've got pro-choice shirts, Ruth Bader Ginsburg shirts. I've got, you know, I'm still speaking shirts. I, I've got all kind of stuff and I have no shame wearing them. Okay. And I'm in Washington, but I'm in a smaller kind of area, which is, it's, we, it's a little mix. It's a little mix that there's Republicans and as well as liberals, it, you know, but you know, think of, Washington's a lot better than a lot of other places. Okay. Anyway, so I've got my coach purse, which this is an LGBTQ purse. I love it. I love it. And when I saw it advertised, I'm like, I gotta have it. Okay. So I have this shirt or I mean this purse and I, and I, and I walk in and I've got a, I've got one of those pro-choice shirts with the uterus flipping off everybody. Okay. That's what I walk in. So just imagine, you know, uh, what a scene I'm making. I'm a big lady. I'm a big lady. <laughs> you know, I've got a colorful purse, which is clearly LGBTQ coach, you know, and it ain't cheap. Uh, okay. But, but, but you know, I, I did get it at the outlet. Um, you know, got my uterus shirt flipping off everybody, you know, which one he hath not a uterus, shut the fuck up, whatever it says. I don't know what are those things. And I go in to get my eyes checked. You know what happens? I go in, they hand me my little clipboard and the woman who hands it to me says, I like your shirt. And I said, thank you. Fill in my thing. I stop. And then, you know, later get my eyes checked, whatever. When I'm kind of checking out, you know, and, and the one lady, she's loving me. I, everybody's giving me love. Then I go in to the other side, okay, and I'm going to go get the glasses. And I got a lady with pink hair. <laughs> she's cute. And so she's, I love, I, I love everything about you, okay. And so, so I got lots of love, okay. <laughs> you know, and, and you think people would hate something like that coming through the door. And maybe in some places, like if I was going in Alabama, Louisiana, and stuff, they might, oh my God, you know, crosses. But either way, you know, a couple of things here. So my whole point with that is this. I'm, I'm, if I want to go out and make it a statement and be loud and colorful, I will do it. And I kind of joked even on my Facebook profile, um, you know, when I talked about the, the, what, you know, the love I got, I said, they probably thought I was a lesbian, but it's okay. If they want to mistake me a lesbian, I'm good with it. I'm not, but, uh, you know, it's, it, I'm okay. I'm okay with it, you know, and stuff, you know, so I'm not, basically my point is I'm not afraid. And now my daughter and her boyfriend did end up dropping off my ballot. I encouraged my daughter to vote. Thank God her boyfriend votes. It was a big thing. I'm like, girl, fill out your ballot. Okay. And stuff. So, but, you know, but I told him, I said, you know, if, if I'm going to go to the ballot box, I'm going to be wearing one of my, my shirts, you know, because I know people are positioned at the little boxes and taking photos and trying to intimidate, you know, because they really believe in election fraud and, and all this crap, like a bunch of you know, morons. And I was ready. I was like, take a photo of it. Take a photo of my car. Come on, come over. I'll invite you in for tea and have a little talk with you about how freaking ignorant you are. Okay. If you're really thinking the election was stolen. Okay. All the, you know, I, I'm ready for it. So my point is this, you know, as I'm kind of making these statements, you know, obviously, like I said, I'm on YouTube. Anybody can find me. Okay. You know, any, your people can search my name. Oh, that girl. Yeah. You know, she's, you know, whatever, you know, find my group. I'm a psychic reader. I'm, I'm all the things that they think is evil. Okay. They think all this is evil, which is pretty freaking sad, <laughs> you know, because it's not, it's not whatsoever. You know, if anybody would do a little study, research, homework, investigate, you know, learn about, you know, other cultures, spiritualities, and things like that would, would find there's a whole world out there beyond one freaking book called the Holy Bible. Okay. You know, which I'm not bashing on the Bible. There's still good things to take from it. Okay. There is still good things to take from it. It's not Jesus's fault. All this shit's happening guys. Okay. You know, so I, you know, and I feel a lot of spiritual say that it's not Jesus's fault. Okay. You know, but anyway, my point is I'm not afraid. And no matter what goes down, like I said, it becomes a Christian nation. I'm not stopping this. I'm not going to stop wearing these shirts. And if they want to handcuff me, put me in jail, whatever, you know, one day or, or something or burn me at the stake, go for it. Okay. Because I'm going to be like Obi-Wan and, and, and you're like, you, you take me out, 
I'm going to become one with the force. I'm going to be more powerful. Okay. That's what it comes down to. And stuff. So I'm not afraid, but I know, and I understand, you know, and stuff like people that are LGBTQ or of other races that are other than this. Okay. I understand some people are fearful, you know, of, of, of rights being taken away or, or various things going on. Just like, you know, right now, you know, with women, you know, having the rights taken away. Now, see, I, as a woman who is in menopause, I don't have to worry about that anymore. Okay. As far as, you know, as, as far as pregnancy and all that, but I do care about my daughter and my granddaughters and all other women. I do care. Okay. That they have rights. And so I'm going to stand up for those rights. You're, you bet a hundred percent. I'm there. I'm with you. Okay. I'm going to stand up for those rights. I'm going to do whatever it takes, you know, my voting, um, you know, or if I get on YouTube, bitch about it, whatever, you know, I got to do, I'm going to stand up for those rights, you know, because you know, it's, it's, you know, it, it's ridiculous, you know, that this is, you know, medicine. Okay. Government should not be involved with the woman's uterus and government should not tell two consenting adults, you know, who they can love. Okay, what they do in their bedroom is their business, whatever. And also, you know, how people want to identify or how, who they feel that they are at their core, you know, male, female, it's not your business. Okay. And, and everything now, I, you know, not being weird or anything like that. I'm just saying I was still getting used to and trying to learn and educate about various things, you know, like, you know, non-binary and, and everything, but I'm, you know, a person who wants to educate myself and everything. And I even have, if you dig a little bit, I believe it's in a spirit talk. I actually talk about, um, you know, some gender identity in the tarot where I talk about the pages. Um, the pages that are in the tarot are very um, non-binary themselves. You know, could be male, could be female, could be no gender. Um, there's, there's a whole thing, check it out. I'm not going to talk a whole lot about that because you can watch my entire video where I explain that tarot had an answer for that a long time ago. Transgender, you know, like I said, non-binary, you know, the, the pronoun issue, all that it's all in the tarot. They knew a long time ago when they designed the deck. Okay. That that was coming. Okay. It's amazing stuff guys. So I don't want you to be afraid, no matter what you see, no matter what's going on, because let me explain something to you right now. They're the ones who are afraid. And that's, that's the freaky thing. That's the bottom line. They're the ones who are acting in fear. Okay. And, and you're like, what are they afraid of? What are they afraid of? Okay. <sighs> so much I can say on that and stuff. Um, you know, for one thing, you know, I, if I was going to implant myself into this Christian nationalist evangelical head that has also been indoctrinated for a very long time in various ways, so we get to church or the parents or whatever, you know, maybe it's a little bit of small town, maybe, you know, all that stuff indoctrinated. Okay. Various things, you know, they kind of, you know, they put on a certain pair of glasses and look at the world, you know, because of the way they've been taught sin, 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 sin. Okay. And, and how they, you know, they see this, you know, like say, you know, they've been preached, 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 you know, homosexuality is a sin or, you know, whatever. Okay. And then also with, with some of the, the white, you know, stuff, you know, you know, being taught, oh, you know, they're trying to make us a minority and all this, you know, we, we shouldn't be proud of our heritage, you know, just all this, whatever. Okay. Just a various indoctrination. I want you to remember something here, you know, and it's not to excuse, you know, any kind of like what big, any kind of bigotry. Let's just put it that way. But people, you know, this madness gets pumped into their head. And there are people that it affects. Okay. And then of course you've got situations where people, you know, especially religious and so forth, which I could probably show you tons of YouTubes showing the hatred. Okay. But you know, it's, it's, how do I explain it? You know, but, but because of that, that indoctrination, it just keeps people ignorant. 
Okay. That which is different from them. Okay. Keep some ignorant. And yes, there are people that are afraid, you know, like I said, you know, being white, whatever, becoming a minority and, and all this stuff. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Okay. I, you know, and I guess I've always had a hard time understanding. I'm not trying to be ignorant. I mean, I, I get, I, I understand to a degree, but then I don't that this, I, the, you know, the, the melatonin or whatever, you know, how anybody thinks that means anything. Okay. It, it, because it doesn't, you know, it really doesn't, it has nothing to do with what's on the inside in the heart of a person. Okay. It really doesn't. I also find it very um, difficult to understand when a, you know, deity, God, they worship Jesus clearly had brown skin, had to have as he came from Israel and he was Jewish. He was Middle Eastern, had to be brown. Okay. And it, it, it's, I know. I, I could, I could, I could scream from the rooftops how ridiculous people are, you know, and, and then try to make him white, which really that was taken from a certain uh, person. I would have to pull up their name right now that wanted their likeness to be Jesus. It's not even his likeness. Okay. No matter. It's all ignorant. It's all ignorant. Do not be afraid. Okay. Because the thing is, the sad truth, believe it or not, they're more afraid of you. They're afraid of me. They're afraid of LGBTQ. They're afraid of anybody that is not white. Okay. They're afraid of women. <laughs> Even women. Yes. And I've showed you guys videos. I've showed you guys videos of Christian nationalists that are afraid of women getting power. Even just women, no matter what color. Women, period. You know, okay. You got a uterus. You shouldn't be a leader. All that stuff. The, the the things that they're saying in churches right now. Okay. But the thing is, and, and I've talked about this and I've talked about this a lot. There is a crumbling that has been happening for years. And, and they're try, they're desperately trying. This is why they're getting so crazy and so bold and the and everything is is because they know they're becoming more and more irrelevant. Okay. And I know it seems like, oh my God, are they getting power? Are they, you guys, they, th the loudest voices do not mean that that is the minority or, or excuse me, the my majority, the loudest voices, but it certainly doesn't mean that we, we want to say, oh, it's only a few. It's, it, it's really not a few. I'm not going to say that guys, but we, we definitely, that's why getting out there voting is so critical and so important. Okay. We, we've got to do that and everything, but I don't want you to be afraid. Okay. It, it, it's not going to serve any purpose. You know, we, we've got to stand up and stand in our power. I want you to think way back in the day, especially the 50s, 60s kind of energy, Martin Luther King, Rosa Parks, everybody, people that, you know, they obviously were going up against the system. You know, like be it, if it was buses or drinking fountains or bathrooms or restaurants, whatever. Okay. And then we're defying the system, nonviolent resistant. They were risking their lives. We know that. And they did it anyway. Okay. Because Martin Luther King was kind of like, we'll fill up the jail cells. There'll be too many of us in jail. What are they going to do? Eventually they got to do something. We got, they got to fix it. Right. You know, they, they stood there you know, bravely. Okay. And they did what they had to do. Okay. And, and I know, you know, Selma, you know, March bridges and everything it is, is, is scary and it's sad, but it started, believe it or not, to change perception. One of the big things I, I know, I can't remember exactly what scene, but when people started seeing on their televisions, okay, what was happening? Like with a, you know, you know, where they were hosing people and, and various things, people started saying, wow, this is really horrible. And they started changing perception. It, it, it happened more and more. Okay. Just like, for example, I mean, one of the things that started getting me on YouTube, one of the reasons I said it's time to get on here and start doing readings 
and started getting messages. You know, messages of spirit. I'm going to take on some really tough topics. George Floyd got me here. Okay. Because what I, what I saw that happen, this is what happened. Let me, let me just give a recap um, for those who may not know. So basically, I, I was on Facebook with this all right before it hit. I'm going to tell you where, because you know how, you know, where, where were you when 9-11 hit, things like that, right? So it's kind of like, and I know for a lot of African Americans, but not only African Americans, because I know there's people that look like me that also felt it. Okay, where were you when you saw the George Floyd video, right? Uh, so anyway... I was on Facebook. I don't remember the exact day or whatever. Okay. You know, this obviously COVID was going on, right? Everything's crazy, but this is what happened. Something popped up in my feed and I saw the George Floyd video on Facebook and I watched it and, I, and I'm a reader. Okay. And I went, Oh shit. I went into my Facebook group. And I posted, I had a black background and white lettering. And I said, a storm is coming. And I just put it like that. And everybody's like, what, what, what's going on? They don't even know what I'm talking about. That's what I was talking about. Okay. That's what I was talking about. Because once I saw that video, I knew. And a storm came. Sure enough. Bad enough we had COVID, right? But then that happened. Okay. And that, I knew was the storm and that was the George Floyd and then we had Black Lives Matter and various things and it was tough and I did I I've got if you go way back you have to dig I did a reading on the George Floyd and and things like that and, and certain things that were to come but a storm is coming is what I said okay and you know and I I remember there was somebody commented like you can't just go making statements like this and leave us hanging you know and I'm like and I, and that's why I said you know people can only take so much so long okay before they lose it that that's it and I knew I knew when I saw that video it, it wasn't going to be just a a localized and it's going to fade off in, in a month or so. I, I knew when I saw George Floyd, that was going to be massive. And it was. It was, one, because I'm a reader. And two, it was so horrific. And it was so deliberate. And it was so in our faces. And it feels intentional. Like somebody wanted to get on camera and do something. I, I don't know. It's I, I've got some theories. Maybe I'll talk about it one day. But it feels very set up. Okay, like somebody wanted to spark something. There's a whole lot I can say on that. I don't want to be controversial, but I'm just saying that's what said. It's time for me to get on here and start giving messages. It's time for me to start reading some stuff because some shit is going to go down a lot. And here I am. Okay. This is one of the main reasons I got here. Okay. Because I knew that a storm was coming as soon as I saw just a few minutes. And what was it? Eight points. So many minutes of that video. That was it for me. But I want to say this. Okay. I want to say this to you guys. Don't be afraid. They're more afraid of you than you realize. That's the way it is. They're more afraid of you than you realize. So when you're out there, like whether, like I said, if you're of another color than me, okay. If you're LGBTQ, if you are a woman, all whatever, if you have a different religion, a different spirituality, other, you know, than evangelical Christian or whatever it may be. Or maybe you are a Christian, but you're really trying to be a real good Christian. Because I know I have, I have some actual Christians that, that do love Jesus. I do believe in Jesus and they are totally against this stuff. They don't like this Trump shit. They don't like it. And that's why they're here on my channel. Okay. So, you know, and, and that's all well and good. And I know and some of y'all, you, you may have Christian friends that are Christian and you're having a hard time, you know, trying to understand. But I, but, but Jesus, when I understand Jesus is a loving person, you know, and love thy neighbor as thyself and would welcome him or grandson and give your, you know, coat and everything and actually would be supportive of programs that feed the hungry and take care of the sick with Medicare and Medicaid. And yes, 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 you are absolutely right. You are absolutely right, and the world is losing its shit, but they are losing momentum and power. Now, I know some fear. What if they do get the upper hand? What if they do get that? 
this is the thing. No matter what, I want you guys to realize. Let me let me put it this way, because I was just I, I was saying it somewhere. I I think I might. It may have been a spirit talk. I don't know. Let me just. I want you to think of the size of Earth. This little blue dot, which I love, Carl Sagan. I know we didn't believe in my stuff, but it's okay. I still love Carl Sagan. Okay, and a lot of us spiritualists do. Little tiny blue dot Earth. In comparison to the vastness of a, a universe that God doesn't even it doesn't even have any kind of borders or boundaries. And it's constantly expanding and collapsing on itself and entropy and all this good stuff. You know, which probably has a, God knows how many parallel realities that you know when we look at the quantum level. Okay, but this little speck that's earth and even smaller is little people. Okay, it is a very vast universe. And then think of the the being, the great spirit vastness that made it all happen. Okay. That vastness, that spirit, that great, you know, that we, we it, it, that is hard to understand or even to find, yet we know is present deep in our soul, deep in our spirit, has the upper hand. And there are little people that are real, real small. The Ron DeSantis's, the Trumps, the Marjorie Taylor Greens, the Lauren Bobbitts, you know, and all, all these people, okay, you know, the Mitch McConnells, who are nothing in comparison to that power, okay? So I know that there are times that you may be fearful. Well, this person, this person gets the upper hand, okay? Remember, remember this little tiny dot, little pale blue dot that that Carl Sagan spoke of pale blue dot okay in comparison to that great spirit okay that that's the one in charge okay so no matter everything that's going on and I know some things get a little scary and I know some things get weird and I and yes I do you know I want people to make it and everything like that but no matter what you remember, okay, that is what is really in charge. And I know we could sit there, okay, that spirit is in charge. That's awesome. Why aren't they intervening? Why are they stopping it? We got lessons to learn here. We got lessons to learn. Let me actually, as I talked about pale blue time, give me, give me a moment. I, 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 I know, I know. Oh my God. Just give me a moment. Because I know there's a, a kick-ass quote from Carl Sagan. Give me a moment. Carl Sagan quotations on the demon haunted universe. I know he's, he said some good things. Oh, demon haunted world. My apologies. I know better. Okay. here I think Goodreads has some good quotes. Right? Give me a moment. Come on, my man. Hold on. Oh, don't be stubborn. Open, open. There we go. Hold on. Give me a minute. God, these glasses kill me, man. Which I love the glasses place because they love me, but I'm having a hard time seeing out of them. Okay. There's one. This is from Carl Sagan from the Demon Haunted World. My apologies. Um, science as a candle in the dark. Science is not only compatible with spirituality, it is a profound source of spirituality. When we recognize our place in an immensity of light years and in the passage of ages, when we grasp the intricacy, beauty, and subtlety of life, then that soaring feeling, that sense of elation and humility combined is surely spiritual. So are our emotions in the presence of great art or music or literature or acts of exemplarily selfless courage, such as those of Mohandas Gandhi or Martin Luther King Jr. The notion that science and spirituality are somehow mutually exclusive does a disservice to both. See, this is what I love about Sagan. Like I said, I know he's not a fan of astrology or tarot cards. I get all that. 
And I know the, what he was getting at and the reason why. Though if I sat there and, and maybe him and I had a conversation, we might be able to have a rational discussion. You know, maybe why I believe in astrology, why tarot cards work. We, we, would, we could kind of sit there without attacking each other. But if he went into a church and started talking about stuff, being an atheist and, and various things, people would, of course, surely attack him. You know, I have a foreboding of an America in my children's or grandchildren's time when the United States is a service and information economy, when nearly all the manufacturing industries have slipped away to other countries. This is almost prophetic, and he's not psychic. When awesome technological powers are in the hands of a very few. Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Google. Listening? And no one representing the public interest can even grasp the issues. When the people have lost the ability to set their own agendas or knowledgeably question those in authority, when clutching our crystals and nervously consulting our horoscopes, our critical faculties in decline, unable to distinguish between what feels good and what's true. We slide, almost without noticing, back into superstition and darkness. Now, even if I, I know he says clutching crystals, and like I said, let me explain this. I said, like, I have crystals. I do. But I don't clutch them. There is a difference at everything. And I'm not going to do it nervously. And I'm not going to freak out because of the way the world is. And, oh, my God, check my horoscope. You know, I, I actually don't do that. And believe it or not, I don't do that many personal readings for myself. I do read for others. And I will give guidance, messages of spirit and everything. But I actually don't do too many of myself. Um, because, you know, I still, you know, I, I, I guess I'm to the point of just really kind of feeling my way through the universe and everything. I'm not going to read in fear. Let's put it that way. Okay, but isn't that kind of interesting where certain people that have the power of the technology will narrow to a few certain things he says and everything. And we got to be careful with that said also with our mind. And I know it can feel a fight and a struggle, you know, to to like say, I want to be informed. I want to know what's going on, but I don't want to be deceived. I know it's hard and you can see. If you look what's going on with mankind, if you look what's going on in this country, you will see people that have been manipulated. You know, they, they've been taken down rabbit holes. They've been, you know, it, it, it's so I, I almost to a point almost can't blame people because there are those that wanted to manipulate them this way. Okay. But at the same time, there's got it still someday, something has to wake up inside. And the heart, if you have a heart, if you have empathy, if you have compassion, that is the one thing that will save your soul and save you from being manipulated from dark forces that you call light, okay? That others are calling light, you know, and you can sit here and say, oh, that's dark. Oh, really? Let's talk about it. Okay, when we've got people that are preachers in churches talking about lining up LGBTQ people and taking them out, okay, and various things that are going on, okay, or things about women that you need to get back in the kitchen that you shouldn't be in power, okay, and all that. I, I, could, I, could, I could bring the sludge up right now, and maybe I will. I'll see about it. But let's read Sagan, a light in the darkness, because that is exactly what he was when he was alive. And he was warning us. Not only did he show us the universe, not only did he show us that we are a pale blue dot in a beautiful, vast, amazing universe. And, but, it, you know, it wasn't as far as, you know, issues with God and everything. You can't, you know, confine all of that to a book, religion. Are you insane when you look at the universe and how big and immense it is when you are trying to see the spirit? And then also, oh, I could rant. Oh, oh, I'm getting started. Native Americans who have, you know, and not just in the U.S. And then also, you know, we have various indigenous, Australia, South America, all over. Okay. Africa, obviously. Okay. Who have respect for the land. Okay. That, 
knew the spirit that were very in tune and they they understood and they only took sparingly from the land what they needed not greedy and trying to get take 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 they knew to be respectful they loved the spirit they gave love and respect to that which gave them life okay and, and, and then other people come over here and what do they do and I sometimes sit there in the madness knowing this is going on what what are they thinking because i know they're still very connected their ancestor the few that are still here okay and seeing what is going on and what people have done to this land and i think oh my god it just they want they just it, it's devastating and so as you know like i said i lived in arizona many years and i know people that are on those reservations and it's it's devastating that there are so many people have spirits broken on those reservations because of what they have seen and stuff because the brokenness that they have seen you know that has taken to the land has been taken into their soul and spirit okay there is so much i can i can rant i can rage all day long and everything about it and i mean i only i'm only one voice and i'm only one force and this is it you know that i can even get anything out to you and everything and yes it frustrates me i i can only do so much but i will at least fucking say something because there are people out there that don't say enough you know and are just you know idly everything going by and whatever okay you know go get your starbucks in the morning go clock into work go clock out home go on netflix whatever watch a movie and not give a shit about anybody else and that freaking has to stop we got to start speaking up Okay, let's go to another one. But nature is always more subtle, more intricate, more elegant than what we are able to imagine. Absolutely. I see the thing is no matter what, no matter what we do. Okay, we can sit there, you know, we can start throwing, you know, the nukes at each other. We get, you know, whatever it is, destroy each other. You know, to the point, I believe Einstein said something that one day it'll probably be left where we just... We, we've wrecked everything. We're just throwing sticks and stones at each other. Okay? That that's, you know, what the hell. But no matter what, whatever we do to ourselves, the earth will go on. It will rejuvenate. It will regrow. Okay? Once it's got us out of the way. If we don't get it. Get it together. We've arranged a global civilization in which most crucial elements profoundly depend on science and technology. We have also arranged things so that almost no one understands science and technology. Isn't that sad? See, this is the thing. He's right. We have all this knowledge and everything. I, I, I'm here because of knowledge. You know, on the internet, and you are able to do all kinds of stuff. You know, it, it's all over. But yet, so many people are so ignorant when it comes to science. Okay. This is a prescription for disaster. We might get away with it for a while, but sooner or later, this combustible mixture of ignorance and power is going to blow up in our faces. This man, I'm telling you, <laughs> I know he's a scientist. I know he was technically an atheist, but still, did you see what he said about spirituality? But yet he was spiritual in his own way. Okay, not, not from reading a book, okay, but studying the universe his understanding of the spirit was studying the cosmos okay and he had a better understanding of the spirit carl sagan than a lot of people that are going to churches right now listening to a bunch of gobbledygook okay which i'm not trying to bash there is still you could still take good things from you know the bible just but there's not the only book in the fucking world and that's what frustrates me I worry that, especially at the millennium edges nearer, pseudoscience and superstition will seem year by year more tempting, the siren song of unreason more sonorous and attractive. Would have, where have we heard it before? Where, whenever our ethnic or national prejudices are aroused in times of scarcity, during challenges to national self-esteem or nerve, when we agonize about our diminished cosmic place and purpose or when fanaticism is bubbling up around us then habits of thought familiar from ages past reach the controls 
Okay. So, and I know, I see all this, this, this crazy desperation that you are seeing this, you know, like I said, you know, when, when it comes to this, the, the, these people, oh, oh, let's go back to 2000 years and those old laws. Okay. And everything trying to bring women back beyond even the dark ages to control bodies is so a LGBTQ. We should be past this now because there has been science involved in this, you know, even studying species of creatures on the planet itself. So there are actually homosexual animals. Okay. It, it's all there. There's tons. Okay. They're history. And it's always been there, guys. It's always been there. Okay. But these fucking people and stuff. So they want to resort to, you know, oh, three lines in a book and let's make laws based on it. Okay. This is fanaticism. This is insanity. And it frustrates me. But I don't want you to think it's going to win. Okay. Because there are still great minds out there. Great minds out there. Okay. That will keep talking and they're not going to shut up about this. I find many adults are put off when young children pose scientific questions. Why is the moon round? The children ask. Why is the grass green? Who, what is a dream? How deep can you dig a hole? When is the world's birthday? Why do we have toes? Too many teachers and parents answer with irritation or ridicule or quickly move on to something else. What did you expect the moon to be? Square? Children soon recognize that somehow this kind of question annoys grown-ups. A few more experiences like it, and another child has been lost to science. Why adults should pretend to omniscience before six-year-olds, I can't for the life of me understand. What's wrong with admitting that we don't know something or is self-esteem so fragile? I am all for, and I am totally okay with sometimes I'm not, I don't know, you know, I don't know. It is, you know, you're talking about, like I said, we are a little tiny dot in a very vast universe that, I mean, just a, you know, think of the, you know, how small, how small it is in an extremely crazy vast universe. I feel I know quite a bit. You know, from certain experiences and explorations, journeys, various things. But I certainly, I, I, I couldn't possibly have all the answers, all the secrets of the universe. I, I, I couldn't possibly. You know, and even some of the greatest scientific minds that are trying to figure out the math and the physics are baffled with many things themselves. Okay, but even when we look at the spiritual and everything, it, it's it's tough stuff. And this is why I've always said, just to make it simple, because this is what I feel like, you know, because like many of you, if, uh, if you're on a spiritual path, you, you may have been like me, you know, that you went out there you want to have answers. You want to figure what this is all about. Maybe you were having a hard time. Maybe you were, you were in a position, you know, where you're needing to heal, where you were to your knees broken down and whatever it may be, everybody has a reason why they get on the path when they start searching, trying to figure out the answers, the truth, whatever it is. Where it leads you, we may come to different conclusions. That's okay. <clears throat> but I would hope you don't come to a conclusion totally and you leave some openness that I just can't possibly know it all. You know, I just, I, I, I can't. But there is one thing that you can do because there is a reason that you are here and I am here various people that are watching is to figure out who you are because if you can figure out who you are at your core your essence then you're going to get a lot of answers looking outside we're all going to do that we're all going to do that thing but when you start looking at who you are at your core who you really are and stuff and you find out that's even that's mysterious when you start doing it who am i when you finally ask that question, when you kind of look in the mirror at everything, then, then the game changes. Then you're on the right track. All this looking on the outside wasn't necessarily, can you figure all this out? Like I said, you're a little, little tiny dot in the universe, the earth, and all the many people, oh my God, when you start thinking how small we are, it feels very big. Like I feel big in this room, 
But if I go stand outside, I'm going to feel smaller. Okay, and if I start looking up, I'm going to feel real small. Get it? We're here to figure out who we are, okay, in the grand scheme of things. This is one of the main things, okay? I love to sit here and just freak out and enlighten folks. And even if I only get two, three, four, I'm, I'm, I'm good. That's okay. That's okay. In the way that skepticism is sometimes applied to the issues of public concern, there is a tendency to belittle, to condescend, to ignore the fact that, deluded or not, supporters of superstition or pseudoscience are human beings with real feelings who, like the skeptics, are trying to figure out how the world works and what our role might be. Their motives are, in many cases, consonant with science. If their culture has not given them all the tools they need to pursue the, this great quest, let us temper our criticism with kindness. None of us come fully equipped. Damn straight. Absolutely. People have got, I, 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 mean, I see it all the time, I know. Go online, you're going to see a lot of people who think they know it all. Or let me, let me put that. No, no, no. Let me stop. No, stop myself. They will say they know. They, they, they act like they know it all. But if you caught them in a, you know, kind of a, a deeper moment, you know, when no one's looking. Somewhere at their core, they doubt the shit they say. Okay. I try to be very careful in that. You know, in that, you know what, I would rather just admit, I don't know the answer to that. You know, like there are sometimes, you know, a very, you know, things can hit. Um, for example, let me, you know, when, when certain things happen that are really bad and we, we see it all the time. Obviously I'm reading missing persons. Um, that, that is one of the readings I do. And I will sit there like, and I've told you guys my story. If, if you watch and stuff, even in, in my family, a very bad thing happened to one of the family members which is one of the big reasons missing persons is dear to my heart. They didn't go missing, but they were murdered. Okay. So, and, and those things can cause you to question, why didn't you protect that person? Why did you, we, we're going to do all that. And there are some times, you know, even though I totally hundred percent believe in a loving God, loving spirit, all that good stuff. Sometimes I don't know why those things happen. Why wasn't it stopped? Why wasn't it prevented? Some cases it almost feels like there's some intervention and then some there's not. And I will do the same things once in a while. I'll be like, you know, why? You know, I and I don't always sometimes, you know, I'm trying to talk to spirit and I don't always get the answer. I, I still, though, I still believe in a good loving spirit. I know it's not their fault what human beings do necessarily. But I still sometimes wonder, why is this allowed? Why are these things happening? I get frustrated like you guys. Sometimes, you know, when I see this stuff taking over or, you know, whatever, I come down here and make it stop. You know, I, I do the same things. I get frustrated and stuff. But but I know somewhere, no matter what, we'll get our answers one day. I just feel that in my, my soul. Not even in my heart, but in my soul. <clears throat> and I know the light always wins. Okay. So, need some more. I hope you're enjoying these. Let me take a sip. <coughs> I went to the dentist today. Finally, I have to have a root canal, a couple crayons. And it's all good. It's all good. So I'm just, uh, I'm making it through. Oh, I love Carl Sagan. Demon haunted world. Get it. The demon haunted world. Science as a candle in the dark. Christianity may be good and Satanism evil. Under the Constitution, however, both are neutral. This is an important but difficult concept for many law enforcement officers to accept. They are paid to uphold the penal code, penal code, sorry, not the Ten Commandments. The fact is that far more crime and child abuse has been committed by zealots in the name of God, Jesus, and Muhammad than has ever been committed in the name of Satan. Many people don't like that statement, but few can argue with it. So, see this mandala? See these Buddhas? How often do you hear about a bunch of crazy, zealot Buddhas going after people? 
you know, I'm not saying stuff doesn't happen. I'm sure there's been a, maybe a, a handful of, of Buddhists who maybe <clears throat> freaked out and did something. But you don't really hear about a whole lot. Or say in history, if anything, you know, you uh, you don't really hear about it. As a matter of fact, there's even um, Ahsoka, who is uh, very... Um, let, me, let me go ahead and talk about him and I'll come back. Um, hold on, because I'm, I'm enjoying this. Um, let me talk about somebody. Hold on one second. Let me... How do I do this? Hold on, let's go. Ahsoka and Buddhism. Hopefully I can pull it up. Hold on. Oh, maybe it's a show. Is it a Shoka? I should know him. Hold on. Maybe, maybe I said it wrong, man. It's been, a, it's been a long time. It's been a long time. Let me just talk real, real quick. And, and because I'm going on a rant here. Okay. So it's a Shoka. My apologies. I, it's been a while since I've thought about this person. Okay. So a Shoka. Well, oh, hold on. It got the Wikipedia trying to get money. Hold on. Ashoka, it was 304 to 230 through to BCE. Popularly known as Ashoka the Great, was the third emperor of the Mara Empire of Indian subcontinent during 268 to 232 BCE. His empire covered a large part of the Indian subcontinent, stretching from present-day Afghanistan in the west to present-day Bangladesh in the east. Now, I don't know if you guys remember, and I'm pretty sure this is part of it. Remember in Afghanistan, there was all these Buddhist mountains and when all the, like the Taliban, all those, you know, people took over, they blew up the Buddhist um, statues, mountains. Now you know where they came from. Okay. In the east, with his capital at Pata Li Pertra, a uh, patron of Buddhism, he is credited with playing an important role in the spread of Buddhism across Asia. And I bet you that I would say maybe 1% of you will know who I'm talking about. But like it says, he is credited with playing an important role with the spread of Buddhism across ancient Asia. And so, and I, and like I said, I, Ashoka, it's Ashoka. My apologies, I mispronounced, but I know who he is at least. Much of the information about Ashoka comes from his Brahmi edicts, which are among the earliest long inscriptions of ancient India and the Buddhist legends written centuries after his death. Ashoka was a son of Bindu Sara and a grandson of the dynasty's founder, Chandra Gupta. During his father's reign, he served as the governor of Ujjain in central India. According to some Buddhist legends, he has also suppressed a revolt in Takshashila as a prince and after his father's death, killed his brothers to ascend to the throne. So basically, let me just give it a nutshell. He was a pretty brutal leader, killer type of dude. Okay. When he was, you know, when he, when he had his rule, but... And there's, there's a whole lot that kind of talk about, you know, he was a very powerful leader, but he was brutal. And basically, um, he completely flipped over a leaf because once he got into Buddhism, he found Buddhism, he completely changed as a person and as a human being. And he completely renounced everything, you know, the way it was, this brutal kind of leader. And he became a peaceful person. And not only that, but he spread Buddhism all over Asia. He's a big reason why why it, it reached so far. Okay? And I saw he it was big. You know, I mean, a, a lot of people, maybe you've heard of Bodhidharma. You know, obviously, you know, he kind of comes from, you know, Japan. It kind of spreads it in there. He, you know, he is said to have brought Kung Fu to the Shaolin monks and things like that. He, he's a big one, but this guy was huge, but he was, you know, he was that, you know, warrior kind of killer kind of leader. And he completely, because, you know, he hit their Buddhism, maybe, you know, just remorse and everything for error of his ways. I completely flipped 180 and became a Buddhist and he brought it, and he had, it became a completely different person. The point being why I just went on that rant, I, I just wanted to explain, you know, is that <laughs> these guys here, you know, like, like Christians watch, oh, the Buddhists are evil and all that. You know, they'll, they'll say, you know, they see that, you know, they want to talk all bad about it. Okay. Except, but 
if anything, you take somebody like this man, okay, you know, a very long time ago, who was a kind of a, a warrior and he killed people and he did stuff and he called for the killing of people and all things, and he completely flipped because of Buddhism and became a good person and then wanted to spread peace, okay, over lands because of Buddhism. Completely different. Except, now, how well perfect, you know, he had changed to become a reform. Well, he, he did a pretty damn good job. He, but he, he really went completely different person because of Buddhism. Okay. And it, and that's the thing. And then of course, you know, it's, it's gravitated more and more, even in America, you know, which, which people are still kind of learning, you know, we have great, you know, Alan Watts, John Kabat-Zinn, you know, various people who have kind of, you know, people showed them, uh, people who have brought over and the people listening to the Dalai Lama and everything. And he's had his plight, you know, obviously, you know, what happened getting thrown out of Tibet. Well, he basically had to run from Tibet. Um, and everything like that, you know, the various things. So there's, you know, it's, it's, I, I, I could go on, but, but what he's saying, now let me go back to what Sagan was saying. So that, that all these atrocities, okay, that have been that committed, the main ones committed, okay, have been, well, Christians. Now there's been a whole lot, you know, like people always try to point Satan, 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 and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to make light of Satan's kind of stuff. Okay. Because, you know, I've always said like when I, when I teach tarot, I've got the Hierophant, which could look like the Pope, but then I got the devil card. And I always say, what do I say to everybody? The devil is a shadow of the Hierophant. Okay. That's the way it is. If you got rid of the church, you get rid of the Satan. That's the way it is. Okay, because the devil is a shadow of the Hierophant, you know, or when Jesus goes to the mountain and he's doing his fast and Satan's coming to tempt him, he's a shadow. He's facing a shadow. Okay. And so, but I know people are like, what? Jesus ch cast a shadow? Of course he does. The devil is a shadow. Okay. And so, so anyway, but the point being, you know, these people, you know, that are, that are sitting there. You know, you know, with Christian and putting all this horrible negative and, and done the things they did. And so it, was, it wasn't seeing this doing this stuff. Okay. It was them. Okay. You know, there, there's so much I could say. I, I could, I could sit here and go about eight hours on the atrocities that, that people, you know, claiming to be Christian have done. And we could talk about the indigenous People that, you know, the children, okay, that have been found in these boarding schools in Canada and the U.S. I could talk about that all day long. They're still finding bodies right now, okay? So, you know, it, it, it's, you know, and, and yes, it, it's very frustrating. You know, it's like, what is the sickness that is going on and everything? So, and let me just go ahead. Let's go. Let's keep going. In the way the skepticism is sometimes applied to issues of public concern, there is, oh, no, I already read that one. Excuse me. Because it jumped. Let me, that was a good one, though. Hold on. Arguments from authority carry little weight. Authorities have made mistakes in the past. They will do so again in the future. Perhaps a better way to say it is that science, there are no authorities. At most, there are experts. Now we know, um, I remember when the scientist tried to talk to Trump about climate change, I still remember him kind of sitting there, you know, and, and I mean, scientists, people that have dedicated their life to the study of, you know, the earth, the universe, all this stuff, trying to talk some sense into this fool. Okay. That there's a problem and we got to do something about the planet. And, and then that fool who teaches Trump. You know, teacher said was the the worst student they ever had. Said maybe the science is wrong. You know, this is, yeah. When you're in love, you want to tell the world. This book is a personal statement reflecting my lifelong love affair with science. Absolutely, a love affair with the universe. Absolutely, that's the way with Carl Sagan. He he. How do you not fall in love with the universe when you really look up? The sad thing is some people are forgetting to look up and look at the universe and, and kind of, you know, realize and recognize, you know, the vastness of it, that the immenseness, the power, you know, of it, 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 it and, and how little we are and stuff, yet how big we are. It, it's just amazing. Think how many religions attempt to validate themselves with prophecy. 
Think how many people rely on the prophecies, however vague, however unfulfilled, to support or prop up their beliefs. Yet, has there ever been a religion with this prophetic accuracy and reliability of science? No other human institution comes close. Now, if I was going to look at, you know, I know, like, you know, even psychics, we, we, we try to read cards, we, you know, I get it. But if I kind of look at biblical prophecy, and a lot of Christians will talk about biblical prophecy, biblical prophecy, says this, that, and everything. One of the big things is Jesus coming back, right? <laughs> and so, and, you know, well, that was 2,000 years ago. <laughs> okay. You know, and, and what I really feel is that maybe what they think is going to happen and what's really the messages we're about are, are two different things. Okay. Let's just kind of keep it open there. And are there certain things that have happened in the Bible that did kind of happen? Um, you know, you know, sure. You know, there are some things, but you know, it, it, there's a whole lot that is not, but this is how I feel. This whole prophecy, one of the big things, if I was going to talk about it, I said, especially the evangelical Christians, everybody, you know, and, and I can, I could find on TikTok right now. As a matter of fact, well, sh I don't know. I, I think I'm about to die on my iPad, but let me just, um, let me just give, let's see if I can. Pull up a few before it dies. Give me a moment. I could, I, right now, I've only got so much power left, but, um, there's so much shit on here. If I go to TikTok and pull up end times, there's so many vids that, that people are talking about. Look at these people. Oh yeah, here's one. Let's look at this. What's this crap? And whether he knows it or not, fulfilled his part in a frightening biblical prophecy. Because according to the final chapters of the Bible, our country and every American citizen were about to face its greatest tribulation. Only the church leaders know the true meaning of this biblical prophecy that is encrypted in the writings of four ancient prophets, inspired to send a warning across the centuries to all true Christians and patriots. Therefore, before watching this documentary, be forewarned. You are about to see how all the world's leaders and their armies are silently playing their part in the lead up to the greatest and darkest event in human yep. history. See, this is what I'm saying, guys. Just giving you an example. Here's Mark of the Beast. Well, okay. started paying for things with our phones, even watches. One company, though, wants to take that technology to another level by implanting a chip in your hand. Some of this, instead of carrying your wallet in your back pocket or your purse, a tech company wants you to keep it under your skin. Okay. There's so much shit. If you go to TikTok, end times, search it. Tons of stuff, okay? Ready? If people want to search, search, look up everything. There's a whole lot I can say on that. And stuff, so, guys, guys, my phone's sitting there charging and stuff. <laughs> people want to track you, whatever, you know, you, you've got to digital imprint all over the place okay it, you, you, we really don't have to implant anybody at this point okay anyway ugh, you know so this is the thing though I, I just kind of I, I just want to give kind of a little bit of a rant and a little bit of message especially from Carl Sagan who really is yes he's he was a light in the universe that spark and stuff, just give a little bit of knowledge and believe it or not, he was very prophetic and it wasn't even really, you know, with his stuff, it, it you know, a, as he saw things, you know, it, it, it's not, well, I, I feel he had a good intuition. He's, he's, you know, he's special. He was special, but, you know, just really observing and, and being a very intelligent person and seeing what is going on in the world you know he definitely had a problem you know with religion if you know it was going to try to you know obviously you know affect science in a negative way try to shut it down control the country so many different things and he even saw a, a thing with technology where a few like i said powers have control of it okay that that i saw right there it's freaking it's almost like reading nostradamus but it's Carl Sagan. Okay. And stuff. There, there's a whole lot of wisdom. You know, get his book. You know, check out his stuff and everything. 
But, um, oh, and I, I still got to do cleanse. I did a rant, but I just want to kind of give you guys, you know, some stuff. But I don't want you to be afraid. They're more afraid of you. That's why they're reacting so freaking crazy. That's why they're getting so desperate. That's where they're trying to find ways to suppress the vote. That's where they're trying to stop, you know, people of, you know, I don't even like the word people of color. It sounds so freaking old. You know, people that, uh, you know, have, you know, darker skin. Let's just, whatever, you know, different cultures, whatever you want to call it. You know, trying to do that or manipulate or confuse, okay? Or, or make cause fear, you know, especially this end time shit. Okay, and so if we see all that bad stuff in the world and everything, okay, all that stuff. Now, I'm not saying there ain't dark forces, okay? Watch my uh, my video on the foreign installation. Okay, there's <laughs> there's a whole lot I can, you know, I'm not saying there's not dark forces, guys. But the thing is, it's kind of funny. The people who think they're walking in the light are actually the dark forces. Let's go ahead and uh, look at some cards here. I'm going to keep it up because Spirit Talks, I like to keep it up as I'm talking to you, if that's okay. I'm going to do the good tarot. It's kind of a light deck. I feel you guys need a light message, even though I'm coming in strong and everything. So we've got the King of Water and everything. So um, even just to my viewer, if, like I said, I'm going to keep your name off and everything. I know people are concerned and stuff, you know, but especially I've got, you know, especially men who are psychics, who are empaths and everything like that, you know, be strong and do not fear. I know with the water, you know, emotion, you know, can sometimes some fear can, can step in there. And it, 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 this is a lot of emotional issue and everything. Trust the spirit, okay? The light always wins. And the main thing, we, we just want to be in alignment and everything, but the light always wins. And so we've also got the moon. And see, that's what I'm talking about. The moon can be about that, like confusion, delusion, and things like that. But also, I want you guys at the same time, I be very careful going in us, the mentality. We are all a human people. We are all on a planet, okay? And, and, and there are those that are being manipulated, Okay, you saw the matrix. I know you guys saw the matrix, how people plug in and be and, and all that stuff, right? And, and there are certain people that think they're awake, but they're not. And there are those, you know, who are awake and maybe they don't talk about it a lot. They just observe. Okay, um, I'll just tell you, um, I briefly, I'm going to leave the name of the app off. I, I was looking for like maybe a spiritual app. That'd be kind of cool if there's a little spiritual app, a little community. I wonder if there's anything like that. You know, the other day I was kind of searching. I did find a spiritual app. Like I said, I'm going to leave off the name to protect the innocent. You know, maybe the creator, you know, is, is different than what's on there. Okay. So I go into spiritual. It, it looked like it could have been a cool thing. Of course, it was kind of smaller. It, it could have had a good concept. And everything very similar to Facebook, you know, the setup. But as I'm scrolling through the people, these are spiritual, supposed to be spiritual light worker people or whatever, you know, spiritual light workers, alternative spiritualities. People are posting Buddhas, this, that, whatever, you know, um, you know, the, you know, like say the, the, the chakra meditation and, and everything, you know. And then there was also a bunch of Trump shit, there was a lot of Republican shit. Okay, there was a lot of anti-vax stuff, which, which you know, I, I don't want to get a big thing about the vax. I'm still up in the year about a few things on that. Okay, but I did get vax, by the way. I did get the jab, but but it was just, it was basically, it was looking like people that were of the alternate spirituality type, and I know they got corrupted. Okay, we're going there. Okay, you know, people that are actually the alternate spirituality, yet the corrupted by QAnon Trump supporter shit. And I went, whoop, cancel my account after I got, I started realizing what was going on. I kind of had a feel after I looked at a few things because you got to create an account before you can even see it, right? And then I went, that's bullshit, you know, is what it is, okay? The moon, there are people that are deluded. So try to remember, guys, there's some very powerful forces, okay, uh, you know, that, that are deluding people. Stay awake. Okay, stay awake, stay hip to what's going on. The magician, let's have, see, this is what I'm saying. Just, you know, magician, people try to cast illusions, you know, manipulate stuff. Magician can be a positive card about manifestation. Don't get me wrong. But it also, you know, if I go to the darker side of magician, manipulative, okay, casting illusions, you got to be careful. Except the ten of air, except, you know, there's, you know, those, you know, 
stabbed in the back, betrayed, you know, and, and all that. I know people are just feeling betrayed right now, you know, and stuff, you know, by, by people and just, I, I, I don't know who to trust and stab me in the back, you know, all that. I know, I know it's kind of scary and stuff, but we got the page of earth, which really, you know, is, it, it can be also about education for me. Educate yourself, educate yourself. Knowledge is power. I see this is another thing. Okay. Oh my God. I, I could I could go another hour, but I don't want to lose you. I don't want to lose you. Why do you think they're trying to burn books? Why do you think they're trying to take out critical race theory and all this stuff? Why do you think they're trying to wipe out history and, and everything? Knowledge is power. Because if people start investigating history, reading books and various things, okay, they're you know, they're not gonna vote for certain people. Okay? They're gonna find out the truth, okay? Except so knowledge is power. This is what they fear, people becoming educated, okay? Why are they trying to make education so expansive, okay? But you know what? A college is not the only place to get education, my man. Star, okay, so that's what I say. Keep an eye on the light. I know we're going through a dark period. Just like even Sagan, the candle in the darkness, okay? The star. And that's what I try to give you a little bit of a window of somebody who is brilliant, Okay, and very observant and stuff. And not necessarily, like I said, you know, that it was about spirituality, but, or I mean, he was spiritual. He, he did. He, I, I love his quote about spirituality, but not religious whatsoever. And he still even had appreciation for like Indian culture, Buddhist culture, and, and all that. He talked about that in Cosmos, you know, especially, you know, and matter of fact, it's over, a, let me scoot over so you can see it. My dancing Shiva. Uh, there it is. Oh, I'm trying to get you to see it. There it is. Okay. The, the gold one. And stuff. The Naharaja. And stuff. He shows that in Cosmos. And everything. You know, the creation, destruction, creation of the universe all over again. And stuff. But the Hermit. I know some of you guys are feeling isolated and alone. And you're wondering, maybe I should keep some things to myself. I will say this. I know I'm kind of being bold. Like I said, it's too late now. I'm all over the place, right? I, it, I'm not going to hide, but I know some of you, maybe you live in the South, maybe, you, you know, and stuff, and, and, and you know, you want to kind of keep things to yourself and stuff, you know, versus kind of come out, you know, I, I fig figure there's kind of a time and a season for everything and stuff. So don't feel like, you know, don't feel bad if you feel like I, I need to keep things to myself for a while. Okay. That's okay. I mean, as far as safety comes first, no matter what, but if you're feeling bold, you want to get out there you want to be like, this is me. This is who I am. This is what I stand for. But, but don't remember, you know, you can vote, <laughs> you can vote even if you hum it and stuff and, and you kind of keep things to yourself and you can still vote. Right. Okay. So and we got the page of fire, the page of fire though. A lot of people, you know, are, you're getting passionate and you want to get out there and you want to set a, you know, set show of fire. <laughs> and so I know, I know sometimes I feel like it too. And stuff, and that's good. If you're feeling passionate though, you know, kind of the alternate, get out there, do it, do it. We would love more voices out there and everything. And we've got the 10 of earth. Now 10 of earth energy that can be about money, money, money. That, that is one of the big things, motivators and people. Absolutely. That's why, you know, we've got all these politicians in somebody's back pocket, but power, you know, and stuff, you know, trying to rule the world is ridiculous, but I know this is the hard one, guys. Patience, have patience with the process. I always let people know about that is a temperance card. We are on spirits watch. I know. And that's why I sit there like, just like I, I can get frustrated like you do. And so spirit, why are you letting this happen? Why don't you do something about it? You know? And so I, I, but I know spirit is doing things about it. Okay. I know spirit, the angels, everybody's guides. I know they're active. I know we don't see it, but we kind of feel it. You know what I'm saying? We got to have patience with the process. They want us to fix it though. And, and I know that. I 100% I know that. They want us to figure it out, fix it. They don't want to come here and educate us. They want us to figure it out. Okay. That's what we're here for. To get an education. Earth is school. Eat of water. And that can be the walk it away card. Detach, cut losses, walk away. What are the hard parts as, you're, as people are kind of coming into their own? And I know this has been a big thing, especially since 2020. When people became maybe more vocal, kind of show their shadows you could say that some people have had to walk away from people that maybe they really cared about but it was like you know 
there, there, there are certain things aren't in alignment anymore and stuff. And, and it's hard to do. But as you kind of do that, see that ship there? And stuff, that's when the journey begins. And stuff, we got to get on that journey. And, you know, and, and one of the things when you do, you're going to find your tribe. You're going to find your spirit tribe. You're going to find friends. You're going to be okay. And stuff, there you go. Queen of Air, especially for my 80s. And stuff, we got to bring out that warrior queen. Got to speak our truth. You know, so I'm hoping it. And that's kind of how I feel. And also for a birth and stuff. So we, we just got, you know, we're, I know we want stability and all that. A lot of us, you know, are, are wanting that in the world. But, you know, we're, we're going to, if we want to have any kind of stability on this planet, we're going to have to speak our truth and everything. Six of Swords. You know, what's kind of funny. I was reading on some things that, that can be about the traveling, running, you know, moving away from troubled water. I was um, watching a thing from one of my friends, Aisha Sheba. And you can watch if you pull up her uh, channel. She has a channel here. Um, you know, she, she actually has a pretty good vid um, about how all these uh, rich people and billionaires are looking for an escape plan. Why do you think all these rich people are looking for another planet to go to? Okay. <laughs> you know, it's like you can put your money in and, and fix this. Why are they looking for somewhere else to go? Keep eyes awake here. Awake and aware of what's going on. Okay. Six of Swords. Moving away from troubled water. That's true. There are those that are looking for a little escape plan and, and trying to get out of here. Okay, I said, but if any, if anything is really, if there is going to be any kind of escape plan, spirit's going to be behind it. I will tell you that right now. And, you know, I mean, I know a lot of people talk about raptures, 3D earth, splitting to 5D earth. I will say, I, I definitely do feel something. Okay, but I don't know exactly how it's, it's all going to go down. <laughs> and stuff, but, but I've definitely felt that, you know, I, I, some kind of thing. Okay, where spirit's. You know, we the tears. So, and of course, so we want to have our house in order. I'm not trying to talk it in time staying here, though. I don't want to freak you guys out. Don't get me wrong. Is that, but, I've, but I have felt something. You know, it's definitely something here that as it just builds up, builds up, builds up. So, do not be afraid. You know, even in their book, it says, you know, do not fear, do not fear. Don't be afraid. Okay? And stuff, don't let these people scare you. You know, and stuff. And, and I know it can seem a little scary sometimes. You know, with, with the people that, that they could, you know, get in power or anything like that. I'm not going to sit here and be afraid of them. I, I'm just not going to do it. Okay. Like I said, you know, it's, it's too late for me. I'm all over the place. You know, it's something I'm going to speak my truth. And that's, and that's what it comes down to. That's bottom line. Because I would just hate to be someone who, you know, went to my grave and never spoke my truth or stood up for what I believe in. Okay. And, and period. You know, and people, you know, we need to stop you know, like this judgment of people. Why are people so freaking concerned about someone's genitalia? Why are people so concerned about who sleeps with who? You know, if they're consenting adults, like I said, consenting adults, you know, what? it's none of your business. I mean, it's just people. It's none of your business. So many things that people try to make their business. Just even, um, I'll leave off with a little note. I was just even watching a TikTok. I, I love TikTok, obviously. But just this one woman, she's just, uh, you know, she's a woman, you know, and she takes care of her, her mom who is elderly. And she was at, like, Walmart the other day. And, you know, she was, uh, she was saying, she was getting one of those little motorized carts. Okay. She was getting it for her mother, though. And I guess her mother was in the car and she was going to bring it out to her and put her mother in. So she's, she's sitting there pulling out a cart, getting it, trying to get it, you know, and some woman, you know, and it probably looked like, you know, like a, you know, and she said she was white because she did make a point that an African American woman has never bunded her business and done a care on her. It's, you know, and that's true because they don't, they, you know, they're, they're not rude like that, but this, you know, older white lady, whatever, you know, walks up to her and gets all up in her business how she should not be getting one of the little motorized carts because somebody might need it, okay? And she's like, yeah, I'm getting this for my mother. She's the same, well, it's not really your business, but, you know, so, and, and she, she's going out, you know, like, say, the parking lot to, you know, so she could give it to her mother. And this lady is freaking following her outside, yelling at her all the way. And then she sees her mother, you know, who's clearly disabled, and she's helping her. And then she's like, oh, I didn't know. Okay, well, you know, well, well, bitch, you know, that's, that's not your business. 
you know, that that's not your business. You know, the, the things that people, you know, do that get in their business that, that, you know, try to be this, this kind of, you know, I don't know, what are they, the Herschel Walker with the, you know, the, um, the fake badge police or what, what do they call it? You know, and stuff. I, I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous. You know, and, and I mean, I've seen, you know, like even a video, I remember saw some guy, he was getting out of a car and, you know, he's got the disability plaque and somebody started filming because somebody was yelling at him. So he pulled up his pant leg and took off his prosthetic leg. And he's like, okay, you know, and the people are like, leave people alone, you know, leave people alone. But this is, I know it's a fucked up world, guys. I know. Do not be afraid. And this is the main, let me, let me just reiterate it again. Like I said, I went on a rant. I went on a preach. You weren't ready for me at night. <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm thinking about the preacher that talked about Herschel Walker. You ain't ready for me at night. You know, I know. I, 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 I love the message though. But anyway, they are more afraid of you. That's the point. That's why they're freaking out. That's where they're trying to suppress the vote. That's where they're trying to stop your rights. That's why they're trying to stop women's rights. That's why they're trying to stop LGBTQ. That's where they're trying to burn books. That's where they're, they're trying to eliminate certain kind of religions or speech or whatever. That That's what's happening because they're more afraid. They're afraid of women. They're afraid of, you know, people of color. That, I, I, I don't even like the word people of color, but that's, you know, whatever, other color, whatever you want to call it. Damn it. <laughs> it is whatever you want to say. They're afraid of it. And so, I, and it's like, where, where's your fear? Where's your fear? Well, there'll be what? There'll be less white people, less white men. Okay. So why is that a problem? I, I don't understand. Why is that a problem? How is that going to bother you? How does that really affect you? Is this an emotional thing? Do we, do we need to sit down and have a therapeutic moment? Okay, how does this affect you? Because it really doesn't bother me. I, I don't understand. It really doesn't bother me. You know, hey, so I, I just, I don't get it. I, I don't get it. It doesn't bother me. I mean, I have biracial kids, so it, it really doesn't bother me. Okay, and so, but yeah, they are more afraid of you. You know, and that's the thing. Yes, interracial couple, all that, you know, you know, they're more afraid of you. Okay, so I want you to remember that. And as I say that, stand in your power. Now, we did say the hermit card. So, of course, yes, be careful when you stand in your power. There might be some moments you don't want to. Like, say you go in a country bar. You probably don't want to start, you know, you, you don't want to say it. But there are certain points, stand in your power. Okay, and, so, and don't be afraid. Spirit is in charge. Just remember, little tiny speck is what we are. And there's this big, vast spirit and they're the ones who are really in charge and I know these and then there's these little Mitch McConnell's and the Ron DeSantis's and the Marjorie Taylor Greens and the Lauren Boebert well she's gone now because spirit got rid of that one okay working on it okay and eventually who Trump that one will too okay because he can't live forever <laughs> he can't live forever he ain't 20 years old okay thank the Lord okay anyway Anyway, you know, with stuff and, uh, yeah, you know, I, I'm not trying to wish death on anybody, but I'm just saying he can't live forever. You know, not all of us can, but no matter what, just remember that except there is something very big and much greater than this little speck. Okay. You remember that and trust that source spirit. Do not be afraid. I hope you guys enjoyed my, my rant spirit talk.